Well, hello. Today I'm going to talk about my new uh, camera that I'm using for photography as well as uh, video. And this is a, a Canon 80D. And I switched between two lenses. The lens that I'm using basically on my trusty T3i right now, which is the 24mm um, stem lens of uh, 2.8. Um, and um, this here is the, 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 the kit lens for the higher end cameras is a 24 by 1, a 105 millimeter uh, constant f4 uh, zoom lens. So it, it uh, has that you know, nice L uh, package of quality lenses uh, that Canon puts out. And it's a lens that's been out for a while and people just love it for video because it does have that, I can be at uh, you know, 24 millimeters and then go to 105 and the f-stop would be the same. Uh, so far, full wide open at four, uh, the photos look good, uh, the video looks good, and um, you know, five, six looks really, really sharp as well. So I'm really digging it. Let me talk a little bit about the ADD here. Um, well, the ADD has a couple things that really make it easy for the filmmaker. One, uh, this was the killer app for the T3i, and I think in a lot of ways for the ADD 70, 60D as well as that screen there that I can flip out. Uh, 24 mil, uh, 24 megapixel. Uh, for, for photos. Um, it has a new version of RAW, so the one downside is that I can't use the older version of Photoshop that I have. I have to actually convert it from the RAW files to a uh, digital negative to be able to use it in my version of Photoshop, which is uh, kind of sad in some ways, but I understand that Photoshop uh, updates its software and I just don't, I already bought that software, so I'm not going to switch to the, the Creative Cloud anytime soon. Um, it does everything. It does everything I want to do. It's a one extra step. Uh, it's a little bit inconvenience, but in, but you know, what do you do? My T3i, of course, is old enough that the the, the raw worked with the, the Photoshop. So that's one thing I didn't realize uh, at the time. Some of the really big positives about this camera for you know, both photography and video work. One has a built has a has a has a, where you put a mic in it, but it also has a headphone jack, and that's like the first thing. Uh, it's like one of the first DSLRs that kind of have that. It's funny, a $100 uh, Canon little pro-consumer camera had both a mic and, and a headphone jack for years. And you think, you know, a camera that costs a whole lot more that they could have put that in, but uh, they finally did. Uh, doesn't have a clean HDMI out, but, you know, it's, that's all right. Um, does have a, a, a spot there for a... Um, uh, do some remote uh, shooting that way. I use the use you know little um, remote here. Unfortunately, this works for my T3i and my uh, 80D, so I didn't have to get another remote uh, with that. The battery is a little bit different. Um, it's a uh, you know, different shape of the battery, and I like this. It didn't spring shoot out like my T3i does. I mean, when I pull when I open up the case, uh, the battery just like shoots out. In this particular one here, um, I just open up the case there. It stays there until I. Uh, basically hit this little switch there and uh, you know, the, basically the battery you know, looks like that and it's it's I've gotten I've shot a lot of photos with it shot a lot of video with it so I can for the most part I, I went on a photo shoot I shot basically all day um, and I, I filled up a 32 gig card uh, of video footage and I didn't run out of uh, juice and I even switched to another card so I'll say we go for a pretty good long time with that um, as well. Um, it does have a, a ability to do time lapse with the video functionality, so that way your shutter isn't hammering down. Apparently, these shutters have like a hundred thousand, you know, life of the shutters before it, it supposedly fails and whatnot. And my T3i, I had so long, I may very well have taken a hundred. 100,000 shots with it and it still works, uh, but it is nice to do some time lapses. There's one downside if you use the time lapse uh, that's in the video mode that whatever focus you had, whatever uh, exposure you had, that's what you got. So if you're trying to do a nice little, you know, morning to, to you know, a sun or a sunset or, or a sunrise, uh, obviously it's going, whatever you set it at, that's where it's going to be at. So you have to kind of plan it out, I guess, if you want something different. But uh, I've shot some really cool um, time lapse things with this already, and that's where I carry around the extra piece of equipment, the intervaler with it. So that's nice. I do like that it uses an SD card. Uh, it would be cool if they would have had a slot for two SD cards, um, but they didn't. So you know, got the SD card there. I like that over the compact flash because 
A, it's cheaper, you can just get them everywhere, and um, they seem to be dependable. I really haven't had hardly any problems with the SD card as well uh, with it. Um, one other thing that I didn't think I would care about as much is the touch uh, screen. Um, I can do uh, focus, and I, I already made a video about that, that basically I can rack focus with a camera. And it works really, with a, with a stem lens, it works fantastic. But this one here, it doesn't work as well. It basically just kind of racks as fast as, as possible. And I, I might be doing something wrong with it. Um, you can't have it on face mode, basically. You need to have it on uh, the mode. Let me make sure I'm calling it right. Um, so it's the, it's the AF mode with the, with the square, basically. And that's the mode you need to have it on. If it's on the face, it won't work uh, for that. But it's nice that I can hit a clock, like I did in that video, and then, then click my face, and then it goes right to focus. So uh, if you ever try to pull focus, um, sometimes you get it, sometimes you don't. And uh, especially when you're doing a one-person operation, it's nice that I could have that as an option. And a lot of times when I'm shooting video by myself, I can click on the camera and just, you know, when I have, have the camera facing me and just click on me and then click on the background and click on me to get in focus. So uh, whatever I'm talking about, you know, I'm talking about the Batmobile, that's in focus and then click on me and slowly goes on focus on me. And um, with the, the 24 millimeter stem lens I got, and I also got the kit lens, uh, the 18 to 55, it, it, it can do that. Um, I wanted a little bit more robust lens for, for video work. So that's why I got the 24 and uh, the 105 uh, lens. This is the brand new one, the brand new one. I has the stem, the STM part of it, um, but um, anyways, um, trying to save a few bucks and still get a quality lens and it works for, for, for what I'm going to be using it for. Um, when I'm going to shoot some documentaries and need to run and, run and shoot, run a gun. Um, I don't have to worry about changing lenses. This is 24, decent wide on a, on a crop uh, sensor and 105. Um, it's decent enough. Today, I was at a concert and I took some photos, uh, wide shots, and zoomed in enough where I was able to get um, several players all in one shot. So, and I was pretty far back, and I was able, I got legs. I can get up and move around if I need to get closer shots than that. So, um, I do like that the ISO for photography goes a lot higher, and also the same thing for video mode. However, um, even to me, at 1600. ISO, there's enough grain in it that I wouldn't want to use that too often. I think for me that's passable. Now again, I haven't been playing with this as much, um, but that seems to be at least seems to be passable for video mode. Uh, yesterday I shot something at 3200 out there. It, it worked, especially if I got a light on me. If I'm in focus and I'm, I'm lit well, it, it looks fine. In the background, I'm sure, is a little bit noisy um, on it. Um, it's, it's, really, it's a really good camera. I mean, I, I can see why folks use this a lot. I fell in love with uh, lobs. I've been using the, the lobs a lot lately. And um, I think you probably noticed my audio has increased tremendously. I can be outside by the fire hydrant when it's cars driving by, and you can still hear what I'm saying, which is uh, uh, really, really amazing. And just one more little extra wire to play around with. Uh, uh, I've seen folks that, that put the shop mods on here. I'm just kind of convinced if you're just doing a, one person talking, just put a lob on somebody and pay 20 bucks for that one lob and turn it on and you're, you're ready to go and it works really well. So um, I really, I, I recommend this ADD. It doesn't do 4K, but let's be honest, who has a 4K TV? Who, ha um, who has a computer that can cut in 4K? You know, really none of us right now. Are you gonna throw your stuff on, on the internet, on YouTube? then, you know, 2K is enough, you know, um, 1080 is enough. You don't need, I mean, how much K do you, how much K do you need? You know, 4K, 2K, 20K. Uh, if everybody has this basically the high-def televisions, and again, little by little, more, more folks will get the, the, the 4K cameras, but, uh, I mean, cameras as well as, as TVs and things like that. But if you're throwing it on, online, it's good enough. I mean, even your computer screen probably can't play 4K, so... Yeah, you know, you know at, the, at this point, I, I think if you're if you're going to get a film in uh, in a movie theater, then I would say you probably need the 4K. If you are an independent filmmaker that's going to throw it on uh, Amazon Prime or YouTube, uh, maybe make a DVD out of it, uh, this camera will be be more than enough. And 
I have so many friends that always, I got to get the best equipment, this, that, and other. You got to hook a, you know, external thing to the HDMI and record peer out, blah, blah, blah. And I'm thinking, what are you doing with it? You know, you're throwing it in a line. I mean, what, is, what does it really matter at that point? If you're throwing it in a line, you know, it, at, at most, most people are going to watch it at, at you know, uh, 2K. They're not going to look at it at 4K. And you probably don't have a computer to, to be able to do it. I want to future proof this, blah, blah, blah. Move on to another project. Work really hard on that. The, you know, the Rise of the Robots was shot on uh, 7Ds. And, you know, if this camera was around back then, I would have used this. Uh, I don't, you know, if I had the opportunity to shoot in 4K, would I have shot in 4K? I don't know. I don't know, because, golly, it was a ton of footage just by itself. And, you know, when you shoot a short film, it's, that's one thing. If you shoot a feature film, it's a lot of footage to go through, so... Um, especially if, if you don't have tons and tons of help like Hollywood does. Um, so, in any case, uh, the stabilizer on this lens on the uh, 24 to 5 works really well. I've been, I was really impressed with it. Most of the time I carry sticks. I carry a tripod with me. Um, when I, right now my, my teeth rise on sticks. I mean, you can see it's not wobbling around. Uh, I like steady shots. I don't like the shots that move around. But uh, I tried it with uh, both the stabilizer on and stabilizer off. And if I'm walking around, I definitely need that stabilizer on. On sticks, you can turn it off, and it's just, it should it's kind of built in. If it realizes, hey, this is on, you know, tripod, it turns itself off. Um, but uh, it's a quiet lens. The only thing uh, I don't like right now, it's got a little bit of what they call zoom creep. Yeah, see that? That makes me sad. And I had a Tamron lens that did the same thing. There's a little lock on it. Apparently, I guess you can send this back, and it would get fixed. Um, there might be some screws on this lens that you could tighten to make that work as well, but you know, for the most part, um, I think this happens to some people, especially these lenses that get used a lot, and I'm going to use the heck out of this lens when I shoot video work as well. So uh, it's a great camera, um, and this is a great lens, and this is a package that a lot of people right now are using. Right now, right now I got the lav here hooked up to the T3i, but normally it's plugged into the AED. And uh, you pretty much got you a nice independent film documentary kit uh, ready to go. I seen documentaries shot on the seven uh, on the seven D that look fantastic, um, and a lot of it has to do with lighting and how your frame is shot and how interesting your documentary is as well. So you know if you get to the point where you need all this fancy gear, uh, you might should ask yourself, you know do I got a story that I'm trying to tell? And if the answer is no, then maybe you should work on the story more so than uh, uh, trying to become a gearhead. And because you can, you, know, you can spin yourself into serious debt because all the cool toys out there, uh, what do you need to tell a story? You need a camera, you need a lens, you need a light or lights, and you need some way to record audio. That's it. The, if you use the manual on, uh, and that's the nice thing on here as well, I can see the, I can see the, me, uh, the levels on here when I'm in a, um, a video mode. Um, and so I can, I can look at that way even if I don't have headphones on. And that's really a nice uh, feature right now. I can even see it right now as I'm talking because of the built-in microphone right there. It's actually showing me the levels. So the one thing I don't like, my T3i, I can take a photo uh, to get, make sure I got exposure right and then hit the other button and record video. This has a button where I'm either in photo mode or I'm in video mode. And so I have to go back and forth. And with my T3i, I got really good to, to know where all the buttons were from behind because obviously I have the, you know, the lens facing me uh, like this whenever I'm doing things. So um, I, want, I want to have the same thing happen. Um, and I've gotten, in, in the few weeks I've gotten this, I've gotten a lot faster at uh, finding things. So one thing, this button here is kind of spongy, the start stop button, it's a little bit spongy. Um, and so if you want to see um, when you're when on camera mode, you want to see it in the viewfinder, you got to hit that little button there. So, you know, hopefully, hopefully it lasts for a long time. Um, I'm sure all this stuff can get fixed. Uh, with this lens here and this body here, it is weatherproof. So that is nice. I got a, I do got a little uh, UV filter on the lens there and um, so far, you know, that's how it looks without the, the hood. But I figure since the hood came with it, it makes it look cooler in some ways, I guess. I think it looks cool. 
So uh, this is a really good package. I would, I would recommend this package, especially if you're, uh, uh, it, one thing nice about it is that I've gotten used to DSLRs. Some of these big 4K cameras, man, I, I don't want to carry around a 30 pound camera. I'm exaggerating a little bit. Uh, this is big enough here. With this and the stem lens, the 24 stem lens that I have, uh, it takes up hardly any space at all. And that's a great system to carry around. This one here is a little bit heavier, of course, because it's a zoom lens. Um, but this is not too heavy for me. I can, with the stabilizer on, I can go without a tripod or take my tripod and make it into a monopod. I'm gonna get some really good footage. So I do re recommend the Canon 80D. As y'all know, I love my T3i. I still love it. It's still cherished. It's still, still got a place in my filmmaking um, arsenal. However, it was getting a little bit long in the tooth for a couple, a couple of things couple of reasons and um, the bit rate on here is, is more um, the ability to do uh, 60 frames uh, at, at 1080 it's kind of cool you know and the time lapse was another thing that I really like as well as a possibility for doing some cool uh, uh, filmmaking type things as well so it's it's a good camera and uh, I don't know what else to say other than if you're looking for something that's why a lot of these vlog, uh, vloggers are using this camera. Um, a lot of independent filmmakers, a lot of document, a lot of uh, people that do documentaries. Um, it's a fantastic setup. Uh, if you have a second system, if you want, if you're not, if you don't like the audio because it isn't balanced on there, but if you put the uh, the game, um, you know, pre the preamp in here, you know, on the low side, and you let your microphone um, you know, take care of, of a lot of it, um, I, I don't hear a hiss. So. Um, uh, that's this, this is my opinion there and I'll tell you what a lot is a heck of a lot better than the built-in sound of these cameras and I have played around with a lot of the more economical um, microphones you put on top and I haven't been happy with any of them they, uh, the, 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 the built-in microphone was better the lob was the first one first thing that I tried I thought man this audio sounds amazing and so that's kind of the route I'm going to go from this point on. Um, since I got two DSLR cameras that shoot video, I can do a, a, two per, uh, a two camera operation if I'm doing some documentary type work. I don't know if I would do that for filmmaking. I guess I could, but uh, you know, if I use this lens here for filmmaking, uh, 24 to 105, even though it's a, it's a f you know it's f4, I, I like that 2.8 because you get that nice bokeh in the background and. Uh, you can you can you know, blur out that background, you know, blow it out. Um, but with the uh, if I zoom in and at, at f4, it looks really good. And you can probably see see how big that that uh, that, lens, that lens is there. You can see that. You can see how big it is. Yeah, look at that. That's pretty big. And that's a lot of glass that's there. And of course, this will work on a full frame. A camera if I ever gets like a 5D level of a camera, a 5D, a 5D Mark three or two or even one, I can still use this lens. So it's um, it's it's great. So I highly recommend it. Uh, go out and check it out. The wheel is kind of nice for me when I have it on manual mode because I can control exposure um, the, the this way. So I can do the the. Um, you know, the, the f-stops with this wheel back here. When I'm, I, a lot of times I do use the AV mode when I take photos to kind of help me out as a second. And so I can use this wheel up here for that when I'm on the, on the, on the Canon. Um, one thing that I have found out that both the T3i as well as the, the, the ADD is if there's, a, if, if volume is really loud, it could cut out the video. This one here, I can get 30 full minutes. On my T3i, it cuts off about 12 minutes. And I think it's because of the buffer size or whatnot. And if I go 30 minutes, hey, your file is in two files because obviously the, the four, you know, the four gig, the four gig bat 32 uh, format on, on the card size, you know, you won't make you let it make a bigger uh, file than that. And I really wish Canon would just make American camera and just allow us to shoot as much video as we want. Apparently in Europe. That's why it has a 30 minute limit because if it's over 30 minutes, you got it, it costs more in taxes for a video camera, a camcorder instead of, of, of a still camera. So, you know, Canon, just pay the a few bucks more, whatever it is. I mean, I think we all would pay a few bucks more if we could actually just use this thing 
um, as long as we want. But 30 minutes, even if you're shooting documentary, that's long enough uh, to be able to do a lot of really cool things. And if you're shooting a live event, a lot of times you can, you know, when it cuts to, you know, cuts off when people are clapping at the concert, you can turn it off and hit even the teeth rod, you can use, use that as well. So both these cameras are fantastic and I do love the ADD and look forward to uh, a lot more photos and a lot more videos and hopefully better audio and taking this production to a next level. As always, rock and roll. And it does compute. Yeah. Repeat that.